All right, so I want to do a quick overview, if you will, of the what's being talked about on YouTube regarding once saved, always saved. Uh, you see people constantly coming out and attacking the eternal security, once saved, always saved, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And without once saved, always saved, it's impossible to have peace. Now look, this gentleman here says, you're not once saved, always saved. Now, of course, that only comes from the devil himself. God would never say, you, you can't be saved. And right, I want to talk about that here in a little bit. I just want to show one clip. I was scrolling through these. And you, you see, it's this constant attack, constant questioning, and uncertainty. And there should be no doubt about it, right? So let me scroll down here and see if I can find a video clip that we can look at and talk about real quickly. So this gentleman right here, here we go. Once saved, always saved is biblical. Once saved, always saved is a terrible term to use. Once saved, always saved automatically implies that once you're saved, you have a license to sin. That's why I can't stand that term. The biblical term is eternal security. Alright, so... <laughs> once saved, always saved. That's, that's like saying it's, you got a license to sin. Eternal security... That's not a license to sin. That's just ridiculous. It's straight up stupid, if you ask me. Uh, because there is no difference between once saved, always saved, and eternal security. Now, this I want to talk about this idea of a license to sin. And what is that? like? Is that like going to the courthouse and you know plopping down 20 bucks and say, Hey, I need a license to sin? Now, you know, to me, it's the, the phrase is stupid. License to sin is stupid. Once saved, always saved is not stupid. A license to sin is stupid. Whether you're saved or whether you're not saved, you have a license to sin. And you got a price to pay for sin as well. And the wages of sin is death. All right, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So there's a price to pay for sin. Jesus Christ has paid the price for all sins, not just ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Right, First John chapter 2 verse 2 and he is the appropriation for our sins and not ours only and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world all right so this idea of license to sin you can you can sin if you're not saved you can sin if you are saved there's no difference there isn't any difference at all you're not saved if you don't sin you're not going to hell if you do sin I remember as a kid watching cartoons and the suggestion was if you do more good than bad then you go to heaven as if there were people that did more bad than good well what the cartoons don't tell you, they don't define what is good and what is bad. What the scripture will tell you is that there is none good. That we're all bad. The scripture has concluded all under sin. So there's none righteous. No, not one. So your sin you don't sin doesn't matter won't save you it won't condemn you let's go to John chapter 3 and this is one of the all-time great chapters 
And it's amazing. It really is. It's one of the most incredible chapters. And how in the world anybody can read John chapter 3 and not understand it is beyond me. But I just wonder, sometimes people don't want to understand. And that's why they're blind to it. But let's read verse 18. And he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now show me, where's the word sin in all that? See, you're not condemned because of your sin. You're condemned to hell because you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with your sin. Right? It's all about faith. Do you have faith? Do you not have faith? When Judgment Day comes, the judgment is not going to be, how many sins do you got? Did you, did you cross over the thousand sin barrier? No, that's not, that's not the judgment of God. The judgment of God is, do you believe or do you not believe? Are you saved or are you not saved? That's the judgment of God. That's what happens on Judgment Day. Those of us that are saved, those of us that do believe, we are lifted up, we are resurrected to meet the Lord in the air. <clears throat> and the, those that do not believe are gathered together at our feet and are destroyed. Nothing to do with sin whatsoever. But the fact is, all the sin of the world is going to hell which is going to be thrown into the lake of fire, and it's going to be done away with forever. So, if you don't believe, then you are uh, subservient, if you will, to your sins, and you will follow your sins all the way to hell. But if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, there are no sins, and you will uh, be guided to everlasting life where there is no sin. So when judgment comes, sin is done away with forever. Those of us that believe have no sin, and therefore we will be transformed into our glorified bodies and set down on a place where there is no sin. I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, I, I hope it does, because sin absolutely has nothing to do with whether you're saved or not saved. How much you sin, how much you don't sin, nothing. So the license to sin, you're missing, the, you're missing it, man. You're missing it. It's not about sin. It's not about sinning not sinning it's about believing or not believing all right and it's always been about faith it's never been about obedience to sin or obedience to the law it's always been about faith the law is there to show us that we are sinners and that we do need a savior and the lord jesus christ is there to be our savior to save us from death right because go back to the first verse I shared the wages of sin is death the scripture has concluded all under sin so we're all destined for death but Jesus Christ has delivered us from death and now we that are saved are passed from life I'm sorry passed from death to life Excuse me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Now, let's say you're saved right now. You shall not come into condemnation. So, this, so if you do sin, you're not condemned for it, right? If you don't, if you're not saved and you sin, 
you're condemned not because of your sin but because you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ all right so I hope that makes sense really because people are making way too big of a deal out of sin and how could you not like the term once saved always saved once saved always saved is a terrible term to it's you. a great term it's security it's peace without being once saved always saved it's impossible to have peace and <laughs> isn't that what we all want is peace peace from all the wickedness in this world once saved always saved is not a bad term it's a great term 